Hello and welcome back to another Sibelius tip. In this object check part 1 tip I'm going to talk about dynamics. I'm going to show you how to reposition the dynamics correctly in your score according to the rules that I took from the website of uh, virtualseatmusic.com and I also wrote all this information down that I'm going to talk about now in, um, in the newsletter or in the text of the blog post where I'm going to post this video so you can read everything back calmly as well. So I'm going to show you now from the beginning what I do exactly to create a better looking score because as you can see all the dynamics are just a mess right now. So let's start by selecting the first system and after that I'm going to filter them out and you can do it by um, going to edit filter and then you choose dynamics which I sh assign to a shortcut on my keyboard with the, which I really advise to do because it works much faster than using the menus or you can choose expression text I didn't use this uh, I didn't assign this to a keyboard shortcut the difference between these two is that if you would choose dynamics it will only take it will take everything sorry it will take everything that has to do with dynamics but if you would choose the other option so filled out the expression text it will only choose the text and not the hairpins so I would like I always like to have everything that has to do with dynamics selected so I do it again I select the system edit filter and then expression um, dynamics sorry so um, one of the rules with, ex with the dynamics placement is that within a system everything has to be lined up so this is absolutely not lined up and so what we are going to do here now we have it selected we go to layout and then we choose align in a row and that's it there you have it well I have also a little keyboard shortcut for this align in a row because it uses so much and also align in the column there is a shift command R and the column is shift command C and also these are really um, advise you to create column uh, sh keyboard shortcuts for them so now we have aligned everything and what I do now is to I'm going to with my ma with uh, the keyboard arrow keys I'm going to align them uh, vertically as much as possible till everything is, is uh, visible within this system so this is okay for me so now I'm going to unselect everything and according to the rules on the publisher of the virtualsheetmusic.com website he wants to have characters dynamic um, text out of three characters uh, centered on the, no the note so this is what we're going to do here the characters that have the, the dynamics that have two characters he wants to have it aligned with the last a character under the note and with one he wants to have it centered so now the the hairpins I always have to put them up a little bit to align them correctly because they never really uh, let's see if we can step for now they never really line up correctly under uh, they are always a little bit too low a little bit too high so I use my eye for this and we do it like this a little bit after the note the last note before it goes into the well this would make more sense but let's create let's do it like this this makes more sense because the 40 the three triple 40 40 cissimo has to occur here so this hairpin should go all the way here now this is lined up correctly this is lined up correctly and <coughs> even it looks a little bit too low here but they are lined up according to the engraving rules so this is correct let's go to the next system again we do a double click to select the system and then I go to layout no sorry filter edit filter and dynamics and now I have everything again selected so now I go to layout align in a row and with my keyboard arrow keys I go down as long uh, until everything fits correctly and we're going to adjust this later on anyway so this may look a little bit weird but I'm going to adjust later on the, the staff sp uh, spacing still I'm going to do an optimized staff spacing after this so 
everything is let's say correct this is the best position for this so we leave everything on the line in one row like this and then only I want to select separately the, uh, the expression text because I want to align, have them line up better with the hairpins a little bit centered with the hairpins okay this is the best I can get it so one more time I'm going to select everything and this goes much faster when I do it normally with uh, the, key the keyboard shortcuts okay now everything is a little bit centered again so we leave it like this and as you can see we can do this later um, let's place the rules here this one goes centered as much as possible but when it hits a bar line we have to put it we have to use our eyes to create a better um, position so this is okay we can place this a little bit here I'm okay with this actually when the hairpin goes further than the node because it goes towards the dynamic after a while okay go to the next system select it we filter out again filter um, let's do only the, the text right now and then <coughs> we leave the hairpins out for a moment and we do a reset uh, a line in a row and we use the arrow keys on the keyboard to pull them down till everything fits <coughs> Yes, and then let's see if the center position though. The horizontal position is correct according to the engraving rules on the website of the publisher. And then I'm going to do the same, but this time I filter out. And I wait, I can do it in a better way. We do it by selecting with the mouse, keep on command to key down and select the next one. And also here we can do a, a line in a row and we pull them down until they are centered nicely with expression text. Now let's create it. We have to make also a very realistic um, notation here because this is for example a piano part. In the piano part a note cannot be uh, cannot get dynamic different. You cannot change the dynamic on a single note. So it would be very unrealistic actually to make something like this. In a clarinet part or in solo or a wind instrument or string instrument this would be acceptable but not for piano. But I leave it a little bit still because it goes to an other dynamic on the next system. So let's take the last system, double click, we go to let's see we have one hairpin here. So I want to leave this one out so I select only the text expression text. I do a uh, layout, a line in a row, and I think it's already pretty good. Got nothing flipped. I will check till everything fits correctly on one line. Yes, I'm going to adjust them as much as possible. This one has to be centered with the last character under the note. This one as well, the last character under the note. This is something I describe in the text that goes with this video. Um, but as I said, this is really something. I can do this by hand, but it seems to be a little bit angled, so let's go to Layout, Reset, Design. Yes, it was a little bit angled. So let's start it here, and because it goes to somewhere, I'm going to put it a little bit after the note. So now we have um, we've aligned correctly the dynamics, and a very important thing to know still, to realize, is that um, view attachment lines that in piano score all the dynamic, all the expression text is connected to the upper staff that has to be like this so this is a grand staff a grand system or grand staff I think they call it, grand staff so in piano and organ music celesta, everything that uses two staffs staves the ex dynamics have to be selected connected to the right hand staff. So this is all done. Now what I want to do is I do a quick, um, I can show you the rules, the rules. I want to do a quick reposition, respacing, optimizing, well optimize of the staff spacing, all this terminology I mix everything but I know where it goes. I want to do a quick layout optimize staff spacing and I do that by selecting the whole score and just in case I'm going to lock it 
going to lock the score, but there is a lock, I'm sure, but I'm doomed anyway. And also, this has, has a keyboard shortcut, so nothing can happen. And now I'm going to do an optimize staff spacing. So on all the, the spaces between the systems, 34, 8, 34, 8, and within a system, 31, 552, 15 to 11, 12, is as close as possible uh, the same. Of course, it's always a little bit different because there are different kind of uh, dynamics. So some st systems have a lot of dynamics, some have nothing like here is a lot going on here also, and there's only a couple of them. So the only thing that I know I have to do is manually adjust the lowest, the lower uh, staff, the left hand staff, and I do that by selecting it somewhere, and then I use on my keyboard the combination Alt plus uh, the arrow key, up or down, and now I can just little by little adjust it so nothing um, blocks, nothing, uh, no staff crosses with, uh, of overlaps the dynamics, so I do the same here little by little, till everything is free and out of, yes, there you go. This is really a um, manual labor, <laughs> a little bit like this, where everything has to do. And now I have this, I can do a last check to see if everything is spaced correctly. For example, this one, now I have much more space to do this, so I do this, edit, filter. Yeah, it never goes with one shortcut. I want to have a nicely designed, uh, spaced, and of course, when I do it on my own, it goes much faster because I use all kind of uh, keyboard shortcuts like this. I uh, yeah. had already yes, this one cannot be a little bit lower. And as I also uh, explain, as I also explain uh, in the text of this video, um, try to align the dynamics as much as possible within a system, as much as possible. So it means also that it's not always possible because music is uh, changing a lot the whole time. But now I have it pretty much uh, aligned correct within. Within the every system, my system themselves are optimized pretty nice. 32 between the system, 13 here, 16, 8 here, uh, 15 here, and 15 there. I always like to create uh, the same distance everywhere. So let's see what can I do to get them perfectly optimized. 13, and this is part of the dynamic um, layouting still because yeah, optimizing the staff spacing. This is my staff spacing and correctly, correctly uh, placed into the dynamics, it goes together really. Let's see, although I'm going to do a separate <laughs> little tutorial about staff spacing as well, because it is part of the object check uh, series. But let's see, uh, 13, 16, uh, 15, now I can, for example, I can make this 16, as, so it comes close to this space here. 16, 5, 16, 6, let's make this a little bit smaller, 16, 6, two times, 15, and this is 13, can I get a 14 here maybe, put it a little bit smaller, now 14 is going to be, 15, leave it on 15, then I make this one a little bit long, uh, wider to 15, 51, I'm happy with 51, and then again, selecting the dynamics, filter the dynamics and then put it a little bit lower so it's better centered between the staves. So I'm pretty happy with the distance now, 16, 16, 15, 15, 31, 39 is it's okay. And 31, so it's pretty good. Now let's take out all the, and check all the views. And what I always do at the end of this uh, dynamic and um, stave optimizing, procedure, I go to about 75% in the view and I just have a real look as, as if somebody would see it without all the layout problems. And what I what bothers me right now for example immediately is because this goes lower is that this looks so much so weird out of space. So 
I put them a little bit higher with my keyboard shortcuts. And uh, yes, it is not aligned with this one, uh, part anymore, but it looks much better visual. This is how it works, uh, people. So this is these three. I'm going to put a little bit lower, so it centers much nicer. These I'm going to send them a little bit higher now. I have the opportunity for this. And let's see, this this is there's no other way to do this. So this has to be like this. I can take it a little bit out, and this is okay for me. A little bit higher, so that visually it looks better. And this is, as you can see, it clashes here a little bit, and here it's very high to the right hand. So this part, and this part, and this part. I select it while Command key down, and then with my arrow keys I put them a little bit down, a little bit, so it just adjusts a little bit better. So now I'm happy with this. So as you can see that. We start starting out with rules, all kind of rules, and then after that, we take off all the rules, the view, and the, the rules and everything, the views, and we just use our eyes to create a little piece of art. So it looks pretty nice like this. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, and for more information, read the text that comes with this uh, video. See you the next time. Bye.